Hello, welcome back. Uh, so after doing a very thorough analysis uh, about the common emitter amplifier that you see on your screen and using two simulations, which is dot OP, which provided us the information about operating points of the devices, that is all voltages and currents we saw in the previous video. And then we perform the time domain analysis, which is right now here on your screen. This is your applied small signal AC waveform with a peak value of 10 millivolt at a frequency of 10 kilohertz. And you have this amplified output right over here. So gain, theoretically gain, that is small signal gain, which was set by the ratio of to register, this is remember emit common emitter circuit with emitter degeneration register. So that was approximately 50. So you have a 10 millivolt signal and you have about, uh, let me check how much is this. You have about uh, 450 peak value. Yeah, now it's, it's uh, 500 uh, millivolt peak value right here in the waveform. So again, uh, or in theory and simulation are a very close match. And we see it's an inverting amplifier because apparently there is a phase shift of 180 degree between input and output. So that's how we design, successfully design this audio amplifier. Okay. And now it's time to see the frequency response of this amplifier. So frequency response is uh, the two plots is essentially it's a, it's a Bode plot, Bode plot that provides us information about how your gain varies with respect to frequency and how your phase of the signal varies with respect to frequency. So on the x-axis, we'll have a frequency and on the y-axis, we'll have a gain and it could be a linear scale or in the decimal scale. And another plot will be again frequency versus phase shift. And we are going to perform that. So for that, we will now focus on the AC analysis, which uh, shows the spice syntax. Before that, you can, I encourage you to play with the time domain analysis for example you can choose to apply a higher value of uh, frequency for example let's say 100 kilohertz and then see how your signal uh, output goes so here you have your input so input and output so obviously you can play with then you can play with the values of the uh, different values of the registers re can be varied and then the gain will be varied, right? Don't play with this R1 and R2 because that wonderfully has set the DC operating point of your transistor. Remember, we have thoroughly discussed this in your previous two parts uh, that I'm going to provide you the link in the description. So do not miss those two parts in order to understand uh, this part better. Now let us focus our attention to simulate the AC response of this amplifier. So we'll close this window and then we'll click tile. So here is your complete circuit. Now instead of a sinusoidal source, we will apply a small signal AC source. So we'll choose none. And here is your small signal uh, AC analysis. So AC amplitude is set to be one phase need not be set if you don't want to click ok and that's your ac small signal ac that comes over here having said that now it's time to enable ac analysis and disable the other two or you can just uh, keep the transient as it is because when simulator will run it will ask you which analysis you want to run so let us enable this by putting a dot so I am running the AC analysis, uh, the decades for, for the points. Let me uh, show you the syntax. The type of sweep is decade. Uh, number of points per decade, I have chosen thousand. 
start frequency one kilo one hertz we just i'm starting from dc and then stop frequency is uh, uh, like uh, 100 into 10 to the power seven so thousand mega it's about one giga so for which the syntax is ready as soon as i input these parameters so this analysis helps me to compute small signal ac behavior of my common emitter amplifier and uh, linear which is linearized about its dc operating point i click ok and this analysis is done then i will click run simulation button now see the simulator has asked me there are multiple analysis uh, defined for the circuit please select one to run i choose ac and then i click ok and boom the analysis is now complete and now i see what i do here is uh, come back uh, to the schematic as soon as i choose the schematic i want to see the output signal so i see the red probe i click to plot output voltage I remember the dc operating point at this node is 16 volt in simulation in theory it was 15 volt which is exactly the midway of the total supply voltage of 30 volt and here is 15 volt so i am having the possibility to have an output range about plus uh, from 0 to 30 volt 15 volt down and 15 volt up so let me just focus on ac analysis click here and here i have the response of the common emitter amplifier now my applied signal is having a 10 milli uh, 10 uh, well well uh, in the transient domain analysis i told you that my signal has a frequency of 10 kilohertz here it is set 10 kilohertz and then we set 100 kilohertz for which if we see the x-axis i have a constant relatively constant gain uh, for a band of frequency or starting from let's say about uh, two kilohertz to not two kilohertz yeah. let's say uh, three kilohertz and on the higher end about 200 uh, about 10 megahertz from 10 megahertz so right from dc to two megahertz um, 10 megahertz actually i have a very constant uh, gain for this band of frequency and the gain for that is 36 decibel uh, so if i right click the x uh, y axis and choose linear representation of board a i see that i have a 60 volt output for uh for applied ac of one volt so gain of 60 i calculated the gain of 50 in theory and i have 60 now So that's really uh, interesting to understand. And at the same time, on the right side of y-axis, I have the uh, information about how the phase is going to vary for frequency range uh, of the chosen signal. For example, if I choose to have a frequency band for a constant flat gain, I have a phase of about minus 180 degree, which is uh, as expected because I said uh, when the gain is constant, I have a constant phase shift of about 180 degree, negative 180 degree. Okay, so here you go. Uh, so it's a kind of bandpass filter response. I choose decimal here and here I have that response again. Now you just uh, see that there is a minus 3 dB point uh, right, right over here and there is a minus 3 dB point right over here, okay, uh, where the gain drops uh, to its uh, lower, so the gain, where the gain drops actually, right. So now uh, you can be sure that uh, by changing the values of the capacitors, you can manipulate uh, this frequency response a little bit. So for example, I choose to vary, var 
vary the value of, let's say I choose uh, instead of 10 micron, I choose 0 0.1 micron and we'll see how the frequency response changes. Click OK and here you are. So it doesn't really uh, help me to have a constant gain for a wide range of frequency, reducing the value of capacitor rather because the impedance then uh, of the capacitor reactance is increasing, right? So I go for, let's say, 100 micron or 50 micron maximum value of frequency and I'll run that. Now I see that I have a wider range of frequency starting from almost like 300 hertz going up to 10 megahertz. So that's the very good uh, way of uh, having that. Uh, what about these two capacitors? For example, I choose 0 0.1 here and uh, here also 0 0.1. So we have given the theoretical formula in our previous videos how to choose the values of the capacitances. So they have a relationship between their reactances and signal frequencies. So refer to that while setting the values. Here I'm just uh, varying them to show you their impact on the lower part and the out, uh, a higher part of the frequency response. So obviously you have those uh, capacitance uh, values which sets the lower 3 dB point and the higher 3 dB point. Okay, so we'll cover that somewhere later. So now we have done the third part of this design analysis and simulation of common emitter amplifier. Hope you liked this video. If it did so, do share with others for a wider reach. So stay tuned for more informative contents like this. And uh, till then, wish you happy learning.